So let me just tell you a little thing about me. I have executive dysfunction. What this basically means is I have trouble making decisions. And one tool I use to help me make decisions is a randomizer wheel. What is a randomizer wheel? Well, you know the wheel of fortune? It's basically that, but I can input anything I want on it. And I face this exact same problem when trying to figure out what to do for a video. And then a thought came to me. What if I put in all the EH postcodes into a wheel, spin the wheel, and then choose a couple of things from the postcode it gives me? Now the EH postcode area is heckin' wide. It stretches from Bonus Dunbar Leaf to Peebles. So we're not going to run out of topics for videos anytime soon. But anyway, I have put all 55 EH postcodes in a wheel plus EH99, which is the Scottish Parliament's postcode. That'll be a special episode if it ever comes up. From this wheel, we are going to choose a selection of subjects from a particular area. So let's spin the wheel. Wheel of postcodes, turn, turn, turn. About which area shall we learn? Five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred postcodes. Actually, to be quite frank, it's more like fifty-six. EH22 is in the Middle Ovian and encompasses Newton Grange, New Battle, Dander Hall, and its biggest main area, Dal Keith, with a lot of rural areas thrown in for good measure. Straight down the middle, you have the River Esk and the Borders Railway, running between Edinburgh and Tweed Bank, with three stations Shaw Fair, Esk Bank, and Newton Grange within the postcode. Part of the postcode boundary seems to go through Middle Ovian Community Hospital just down here, and its most northern boundary seems to touch Fort Canard. But enough about geography, I'm not Paul Barbado, and if I was, I'd likely be better off than I am now, so let's just stick with what I'm good at, obscure history. So you're likely familiar with Dalkeith Country Park, and if you're not, it's a country park in Dalkeith, and a very good one at that. It, like many country parks, used to be a country estate, hence the big mansion on the grounds. We're going to talk about this mansion in a moment because that mansion ate a castle. This is Dalkeith House and up until the 1920s it was the seat of the Bacluth family. But that is not where this story starts because as I've already said, it used to be a castle. So Dalkeith Castle appears in the 1100s as a castle belonging to Clan Graham, but in 1342 it got passed on to Clan Douglas. In 1458, James Douglas, Dwarf Lord Dalkeith married James I's daughter Joan and became the first Earl of Morton. The castle is added to in the 15th century, forming an L plant with a curtain wall. It became involved in the rough wooing when the English attacked the castle in 1548. James Douglas, 4th Earl Morton, was captured by the English while defending Dalkeith Castle against them and was taken to England as a hostage, being released in 1550. I think I've said this before, but we romanticise castles in the period when castles were relevant a lot, but when it comes down to it, it feels more like a war zone in some third world country. Replace castle with compound and earl with warlord, and all of a sudden it doesn't seem too romantic. It sounds like the kind of place you'd find war correspondents in full body armour if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, James Douglas became Lord Chancellor and was later involved in the mob that burst into Hollywood to murder David Rizzo. I've spoken about Rizzo in another video, but Rizzo was suspected of having an affair with and impregnating Queen Mary, but there were also suggestions that Darnley, who ordered the murder, was also having an affair with Rizzo. I mean, by all accounts, Mary and Darnley weren't really into each other, so I guess they shared a third. Note to all unicorn hunters, however, if you're looking for a third to save your marriage, it might end up in that third being murdered. Talk over your feelings. Stop trying to save your marriage by looking for bisexual poly girls on Tinder. Polyamory isn't easy. Anyway, moving away from the lower corner of people who died over 400 years before I was born, Morton was arrested in 1580, having been accused of complicity in Lord Darnley's murder in 1567. He was later executed in 1581. 
The Douglas family sold Dalkey Palace to Francis, second Earl of Buccleuch, in 1642, and in 1692 we get our first depiction of the castle. Now I know this page is titled Glam's Castle, but believe it or not, it was found that this image for some reason was mislabeled and it was in fact Dalkeith Castle. So let's have a talk about it, shall we? We can see what was obviously the original part of the castle, this L-shaped building back here, but we also see the gatehouse and the courtyards it contained, and I'm going to be quite frank, I prefer this. Look at the current Dalkeith house. It just looks like a generic Richmond's house. Sure, it'll be full of history, but just look at this. This is a work of art, but this, this is bull- Anyway, this drawing was done in the 1690s, and to be very frank with you, it showed a castle living on borrowed time. Fashions were changing, and the 18th century was quick approaching, and the Buccleuch family in 1702 were all like, you know, everything is a lot more peaceful now, there's a lot less wars, and I don't think we need a castle anymore for defence. I think we should rebuild this castle as a nice country mansion to show off our wealth and taste. Surely there won't be any more trouble from here on out. So from 1702 to 1710, the castle became a country house because there was no more need for glorified compounds anymore. So that is how Dalkeith lost the castle and frankly it would look much cooler than this house. But here's the thing that are apparently still parts of the castle still remaining. You see, they didn't just demolish the castle and build a house. They seem to have subsumed the castle into the fabric of the building, meaning the western wall of the house was actually part of the wall of the castle. So yeah, think about that when you visit Dalkeith Country Park. So Dalkeith was reconnected to the rail network in 2015 with the opening of the new S-Bank station, but that station is 22 minutes walk from the town centre. There used to be a station that was much closer that I've covered in an earlier video, but there used to be a railway that straight up just went through the town. For evidence of this, we need to consult the 1852 OS plan of Dalkeith. From the station, it went east through the town, then northeast over what would have probably either been a bridge or a raised platform, and then back east again towards Smeaton Junction. The line also served several industries like coal depots and iron foundries, but it brought the railway closer to the town centre than the actual station. Today, literally nothing I have found exists of the railway. Seriously, the whole railway is built over so much that traces of this specific railway have just completely disappeared. It's actually quite rare that railways disappear like this from the landscape, and it takes a big change in the urban layout to do that. Even the stretch of line between Davidson's Mains and Barton has that one railway bridge. Anyway, what hasn't totally disappeared was the successor, which we can see on a map made 40 years after this one. It starts off just north of today's S-Bank station and heads generally northeast, meeting the previous line's route near Musselblower Road. Now, unlike the last relic, there are still traces of the old line, and a lot of the line seems to have been taken over by nature, which is great for wildlife, but you can still see parts where the old line used to run from the bridges that ran over Dalhousie and New Battle Roads. If you go down to the old graveyard in Dalkeith, you might find something rather strange. A tower. Now, this was not a water tower like the one that I covered in another video, but it was a tower for another totally different purpose. To prevent a zombie apocalypse. Actually, no. It was to stop body snatchers. So, in the 1820s when this was built, body snatching was all the rage because the university needed bodies to sect and nobody was particularly willing to give over body for science for very cultural, religious reasons. The university needed bodies, but only people condemned to death were given up for dissection. But only 56 people were executed every year, whereas 2,000 bodies were needed to be dissected. This is where organised crime got involved. Digging up a grave and stealing a body was a misdemeanor, but it wasn't a felony. So if you got caught body snatching, you were imprisoned or fined rather than executed or transported. You are going to Australia. No! Now we all know what we are thinking. Burke and Hare. 
but the reason why they are so notorious is because they murdered people to get their bodies. But most people just dug up the ready supply of corpses within their town because people died surprisingly often in those days. So watchtowers are built in graveyards, there's some in Edinburgh but this one is an EH-22 and so I'm going to talk about it here. And these towers house night watchmen who watched over the graveyard for body snatchers who operate at night. And fun fact, they were armed. So if you were caught stealing corpses, you risk getting shot. I've yet to find out if they ever sold a dead body snatcher for the section, but personally I think it would make a brilliant short film. All of this ended in 1832 with a law that allowed you to give up your body for science and set unclaimed body to be dissected, which generally killed off the body snatcher trade, leaving these watchtowers to be redundant reminders of a day gone by before organs from living bodies became the black market trade of the hour. So yay, there we go, the first ever postcode medley. I really don't know how to conclude this, so let's steal something from old cartoons and ask, what did we learn today? Well, you know what I learned? Never turn your castle into a mansion unless you are very sure that your country isn't going to descend into a ground war ever again.